Necessary Blackness podcast is independently owned and we do not accept sponsorship dollars from corporations. We are supported by the people such as yourself who know that in war, the first casualty is the truth. We are at war with racism and white supremacy. We must continue to tell the truth. Support us by purchasing your Necessary Blackness t-shirt by sending an email to NecessaryBlacknessPodcast at gmail.com. No, that's what I'm talking about, man. You'll hear it here first. (laughs) Now our feature presentation. Peace and Black Power family. This is your host, Raheem Shabazz, and I am here. With my co-host, Marcy Lee, and thank you for everybody that has been tuning in to Necessary Blackness Podcast, and I want to send a special thanks and a shout out to everybody that been sending in uh, donations and has been supporting us thus far. As you know, we do not accept money from third-party corporations or any type of outside entity. That way we can remain the independent voice, that black independent voice, that uncompromising independent voice. That uncensored. That uncensored. (laughs) Yeah. And speaking about censored, there will be no censoring. There will be no filters. (laughs) This is unfiltered. But... What we're going to do right now, this segment, we're going to talk about everything that is happening in pop culture and what's happening in black America for this week. And Marcy Lee, I want you to lead this segment. All right. Because well, you had a lot of things you was enlightening me to. And I was like, wow. Well, one of the things that I think that, that, yeah, one of the things that was brought to my attention that I think we should talk about is this Pope. The Pope. This Pope from Australia, though. It's Australia. But. Uh, When are they going to get to the ones over here, the Catholic priests? You know what? That's a good question, but I think they're moving in the right direction. And for all of you who don't know. There is a pope. His name is Cardinal George Pell, and he has been convicted and will be going to prison for six years um, for his inappropriate child um, sex abuse of two choir boys. Six years. Six years. Now, you know the black man gets six years for jaywalking and having a joint in his pocket? Hey. And this man is going around molesting young men. And robbing them of their innocent and robbing them of their childhood. And he only gets six years. Six years. That is blasphemy. Blasphemy. But it's a start, right? It's a start, but they need to get it together. How can you, you know, support an institution like that when you know it's rampant? Like these dudes, they walling. When when I say it's a start, right, I would look at it as okay this happened over there because it doesn't affect us over here but hopefully the united states will have the moral fortitude to follow their lead and to convict these pedophiles that masquerade as as as, but you uh, know what you know they're not preachers and look they too big you you got the catholic church you know, and they they like the NRA. Uh, they got so much money, so much power. Um, from what I understand, when these popes are found or are accused of doing the, these things, all they do is simply move them somewhere else. Yeah, they move them somewhere else. And How can people who are a part of that faith not be outraged and not do something about it? It's the strangest thing to me. Yeah, listen, let me, let me explain something, right? In 2019, these priests, these preachers, and these reverends are the money changers that Jesus ran (laughs) and flipped over the table that they talk about in the Bible. These are the same people Jesus ran from amongst us. So I'm not surprised about it, but it's just... With what does all, this say with, about with, society, though? It, say, it says a lot about society because with all this information and with people knowing 
Like, I wouldn't step foot in one of those. Uh, but you know, it's not just the church, though. Like, we are just some oversexed, crazy nuts. Like, what is the problem with the world? Because now we're seeing it's not just America. Because I think it was you who was telling me that porn, like, porn sites, when um, it was the uh, shutdown, mm-hmm. they was just talking about how much it was an increase of people being at home and not at work. They was oh, on yeah. porn sites. Why are we so like crazy about sex? Like we see it all the time, we get it all the time. What is the issue? Like well, you got I, I R. Think... Kelly, you got Bill Cosby, you got all these people involved in this sexual deviance. What's the problem? I think the problem is is that we have been brainwashed. We have been we have been overconsumed with mass media and whatever is more prominent that's on television and, and different things like that. It, the sexualization of, of things. People, a lot of people, more than we would like to believe, have brought into it. So what else? What's next? Oh, so we done with that. What? We're done with that one? Yeah, we done with that. You know, I'm All not... Right. I, listen. What? I, listen, I don't want to waste no more time that don't exist on that. Why? Because we got a lot to cover. All right. Well, we you, can go, you go all, ahead. We can go all day about it. No, I want you to run down the list. What's next? Okay, mister. I guess the next thing on the list would have to be... Um, well, see, you don't want to talk about that. You told me you don't want to talk about... <laughs> About Lisa Van Allen and what she had to say no. about Miss Mother. So you don't want to do that. Yeah. The other thing I had was Nancy Pelosi and her comment about Trump and impeachment. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I, I briefed over something that came across my timeline. But what's that about? She was just talking about how she did not think that Trump should be impeached because she believes that it will be divisive and cause chaos. Like, it will just make things worse. So what? Um, So he gets away with colluding with Russia and all these crimes that he's committed and financial embezzlement of money. Yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about, man. Like... And, and you know what? The Democrats is their fault because they got the House. And they and when they announced that, what is she? She's the Speaker of the House, right? right? And when they announced that she was going to be the Speaker, there was other prominent black women that names was being thrown out there. Okay. And they overlooked her for Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, or whatever her name is. And this is what they get. Yo, let, let me tell you something, man. The Democrats and the Republican are two separate wings, right? Of the same bird. Yo, they, they, come on, man. Yo, they've been talking about impeaching this man forever. And now as you get closer and closer, because they saying that uh, Mike Pence is 10 times worse than Trump. So what? Bring it on. Well, what do you mean? Bring it on. Bring it, you want to give him a go? Listen, give him a go. Mm. Well, the only reason why I you think know what it's, I mean? it's just like yo, we 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 got to stop with the lesser of two evils. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah, right. You catching hell with Trump, and you oh we'll catch more hell. What's with the him? likelihood and that it, you think people are going to get some balls and do something about it? Everybody is caught up in this two party system where they feel like they can only vote for a Democrat or a Republican when there's plenty of other political parties to uh, participate with. But I think the thing that's important about what Pelosi was talking about, which you might not agree. What is that? If you think further ahead and you thinking about the new world order Mm -hmm. and these conspiracy theories, I think she might be onto something just a little bit because I'm thinking about martial law. Okay. I'm thinking about <laughs> concentration camps. Okay. If we, it, it's almost like they trying to check the temperature, which you always say, mm-hmm. trying to see what can we do to get them to react in a way that will give us the ability mm-hmm. to enact martial law, to put these people 
in concentration camps. So I'm thinking along those lines, she might, because the Trump people have already said, we going to tear, we going to burn his mother down if y'all try to kick him out of office. Yeah, but you know, you see, this is the thing though, right? It's always, what if this had happened? What if that would happen? It's always that, that black cloud of fear, right? Right. Listen, it, whatever's going to happen, is going to happen. You know what I mean? And, and let me tell you something, right? For some people, and I'm speaking to black people, we already in concentration camps. And it, 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 it can't get no better than this. You know, it, well, I, I meant to say, it can't get no worse than this. It can so, get worse. People said that when before Trump got elected, I had so many... Black people who weren't thinking mm. or wasn't informed enough to understand policy, to understand executive orders, to understand how it would affect black people. I mean, yeah. they, they were thinking there's no difference between Hillary and Trump. The difference is Hillary would not have been able to get away with doing the things that Trump has been able to get away with. That's why he was put here. And what I'm saying is if we play into this narrative, and you know they're always playing these psychological games. Yeah. You don't you I would rather be living how I'm living than living in a concentration camp. I would rather be living how I'm living now than have martial law enacted. You really think that it's I don't think they'll do it. And if they do do it, then bring it on. That's just me. Mm -hmm. But one thing I will tell you, right, is Trump already accomplished what he was put in the office to accomplish. Okay. And that was he has appointed more federal judges than any sitting president. Now, those judges are white, right and white, but they're right-wing judges, right? That have similar mm -hmm. ideology. Conservative ideology. Conservative ideologies right. like Trump. And they are going to be in office for the next 40 to 50 years. So I believe, you know, Trump, I believe that Trump accomplished what he was put in office to do. And that is him being the president that appointed more federal judges than any of his possessors. And that these judges all have an uh, anti-black, an uh, anti-immigrant policy and stance, and there are uh, right-wing judges okay. that are going to um, make sure for the next 35 to 40 years that that line of thinking is push, what's going to be the rule forward. of law. Yeah. Well, see, that's and what... that right there has more lasting effect that any of his other policies, because guess what? The next president that gets in office could repel a lot of that, that he's doing the immigration thing, throw that out. The overspending to the Defense Department, cut that in half. But what you ain't going to do, you ain't going to remove those Supreme Court judges and you ain't going to remove those federal court judges because they are in office and until they do something that's unethical, then they're going to so be that's, deciding So that's my thing. It's like, okay, so we understand Trump. We understand that he has some asinine, you know, behaviors, uh -huh. things that he says. Why do we keep giving him attention? Like, why can't we just be like, oh, yeah, that fool over there acting like a fool and keep it moving? Why do we keep on giving him He's the president all this of the attention? United States. But if, we, <laughs> if, you, if, if there's nothing we can do based off of what you're saying, what is the point? I'm not saying anything. Is it to just do. just can, have public no, opinion no, to be can, in sync? No, we can hold this, you know, we can hold him accountable and hold his feet to the fire. Uh, Trump. But, but but listen, we as American citizens and people, we can't do nothing. It's up to those Democrats that's in office, those congressmen and people like Nancy. How you say her name? Pelosi. Pelosi. It's up to them to do the right it's up thing. To, it's up yeah, to the Yeah, because they they can enact along with Republicans that they, they have a bill right now where they can stop him from building this wall. 
and they're trying to come up with a compromise. But you just said deal. that they're two wings of the same bird. So we know that they're working together in yeah. concert. And yeah. they try to pretend like they're not. That's one thing um, former governor Jesse Ventura, yeah. he wrote a book about it. He constantly talked about it. I actually thought he was going to run for president, but I think he got spooked. I think they was like, no, because he was talking about it big time. Um, but he was talking about it all the time, how in front of the cameras, they fighting at each other, but behind closed doors, they're the best of friends. And That's we've seen fun. photos yeah. of these politicians hanging out. Yeah. So that's that not too far. Gallows, yeah. So drinking. we, as the people, don't you think it's time for us to start thinking for ourselves? Like, stop playing this game with them. Like Democrats, you're saying it's up to them, but it's up to us to make sure that they represent our interests. But they're not doing that. At all. So what's our solution? To me, the solution is we need our own sub-government. Like, we need oh, to we forget need about this. We need a third party. Well, we have some party. third parties. We had the yeah, Green Party. But people people hasn't been taking them serious. And I think that, that was a the mistake. problem. Because when you have individuals that are not of the mindset of Democrats, like see, Bernie Sanders... Right. He wasn't a Democrat, but he had to come to the Democratic Party in order to be taken serious. He's so an independent, else? right? Yeah, he was an independent. Well, um cuz we got 5 more minutes. What else we got? What's I'm watching you you tell me what's happening. I I gave up some stuff. It's time <laughs> for said, you to I give gave up. up some stuff. <laughs> well, you know what I want to talk about? What? I want to talk about this situation that's going on with the school system. Okay. Now, a couple of years ago, they had a situation. It was front headline news. It was called APS, Atlanta Public School Scandal. But there's a bigger scandal going on whoop, right whoop. now. Absolutely. There is a bigger scandal that's going on right What's now. What's up, Felicity? <laughs> and, um, What's up, Lori? <laughs> this scandal... <laughs> Involves eight universities, right? Millions in bribes, ten corrupt coaches, up to twenty-five million dollars too. Yeah. And guess what? Over fifty people involved. Right. In it. Yep. So this is something very, very big. Uh, the feds, when they busted them, they call it Operation Varsity Blues. Mm, what a cute name. And these was rich, affluent white people that was using their money, power, and influence to allow their daughters to attend colleges. And sons. And sons <laughs> to attend colleges. And um, and not based off of their qualification. Merit. Because they, they always saying, no affirmative action. Oh, this you was have more to get than affirmative it. action. This was you had to pay to play. Absolutely, so you know, but I'm saying conservatives for the longest they was always saying that they're against affirmative action because it disregards merit. Mm -hmm. But we know people like Bush, rich people before this scandal oh, was yeah, paying absolutely. universities, buying you know um, their attendance at mm -hmm. these high profile schools. So this ain't new. Is this new? No, this is not new. But it's just flipped a different way. I think I think what is new is that they got caught. <laughs> they usually don't get caught. But this individual that did it, right, this is why he got caught. Not only did he set up a bogus nonprofit where he funneled the money to. And you talking about his name is William Singer. Yeah, some people was paying up to, yeah, they said one person paid uh, uh, $1.5 million. Like, this was crazy. They, these these parents was doing whatever they had to to make sure little Bobby and Becky get into these schools. And what this guy, Singer, did with his nonprofit is that he funneled the money there and then he wrote the uh, he wrote the money that he received off as a tax deductible. So he so, got so 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 not only did you get over, you you trying to get over twice. And um it was a lot of greed. Racketeering charges. Yeah, yeah. Um, but listen, I can guarantee you, and I'm gonna follow this closely. I wanna see 
if they get if they get as much time as they did to those black school teachers that was um changing test scores because they in this instance there was no test scores to to change they actually paid a, a proctor to actually fill in the correct fill in version. the correct answer mm-hmm. and so listen this is what they did this is how the scam went right if you lived in Maryland you 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 would say oh I'm sick can I get an extension to take the test right so they said, yeah, okay, you can get extension. Um, then you would say, all right, well, I'm in New York. I need a proctor. All right, well, you're in New York. You need a proctor. And they will already have their guy there, meet at the public library. He de- he takes the test. And in return, he probably got paid $150,000. Like, this, 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 this was a scandal. And not, um, not like to mention no the under. coaches. I thought the, the coach part was... Crazy too. So they would apply to the school hoping to up their chances. The coaches would basically agree and and tell the colleges that these kids were in this sports program. Yeah, scholarship. And then once the kid got accepted, they would drop out of the sport and not do it. But the coach would get paid and everybody. Mm-hmm. That's that is an elaborate plan. Like it's just something that somebody like us we wouldn't think of doing stuff like that. No, we don't. But you know what we do do? And we get penalized for it? We will take our kids... To a better school system? To a better school mm-hmm. outside of our district, which parents have been jailed for because we want what's good for our kids. How is that criminal? We want them to succeed. We want them to be the best that they can be and get the best education. And, and they know that. that it's not the same education. Because if it wasn't an issue, you wouldn't have a problem with them coming to your jurisdiction. You know what I'm saying? So they must know that it's something wrong or that their child is not getting what their child is getting. They know. They know. So that's the big big scam with the rich white people. Um, I don't know if there's any black people involved. Mm. So I, I don't know about that. We all just say people who got a lot of money. If it is, it probably was the janitor. <laughs> How did janitor come in? <laughs> anyway. Listen, the janitor knew what was going on and he didn't blow the whistle. So what else we got? We got three more minutes before we close out. What else we got? No, nah, I think that's basically it. We can wrap it up because it, I, you it? got something else? I don't have anything nah, else. that's it. Um, I want to say condolence to uh, George Frazier. Foreman. George Foreman. I said George Frazier. His daughter. I want to say condolence to George Foreman, his uh, daughter, Frida, George Foreman. You know, she had mm-hmm. George as, All as his her children middle name. have George. And um, she died at the age of 42. And They don't she, know the cause, though. Yeah, they don't know the cause. She, but she leaves behind a husband, two daughters, three grandchildren. And her parents, as well as 11 siblings. Um, She also uh, had like three, four different degrees in college. And she wanted to go into um, criminal justice. Yeah, criminal justice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of the things, you know, she did the boxing thing because she wanted to show her father she could do that. But um, she definitely was building herself up. By going to school and getting three degrees to be a, a social justice warrior. And um, my condolence to their family. I, I read a, a post that uh, George Foreman had posted. And he said this would be the first Sunday in 42 years without his daughter. It was mm-hmm. really, really touching and heartbreaking. So our condolence goes out to the um, Foreman family and anybody else out there that... Uh, Lost, lost a someone. loved one. Yeah. So with that, I'm going to say peace and black power. And I'll see you the same time, same place next week. Are you going to be joining us next week? Am I going to be joining you next week? You know you be busy all the time. No, no. I'll be here next week. Necessary Blackness Podcast is independently owned. And we do not accept sponsorship dollars from corporations. We are supported by the people such as yourself who know that in war, the first casualty is the truth. We are at war with racism and white supremacy. 
we must continue to tell the truth. Support us by purchasing your Necessary Blackness t-shirt by sending an email to necessaryblacknesspodcast at gmail.com.